Welcome to our joint webinar hosted by ST, Microelectronics, Candera, and IR. This webinar is about smart home revolution, unleashing next generation white goods with brilliant HMIs. I am Rafael Taubinger, the product marketing manager at IR. With me, I have Philip Privalov, business development at Candera, and Bertrand Denise, product line manager at STM Microelectronics. We are thrilled to have you with us in this session. Please note that we are recording this session, so you all have the chance to revisit any parts you find especially interesting. We also ask you to make use of the question panels for any questions or problems you might have. There is a dedicated team ready to provide your answers, and we will have a live Q&A at the end of this session to cover all the open questions. So uh, let's take a look on the agenda for today. We will start with Bertrand that will give us some insights on the cutting edge STM32 U5 series and its new Chrome GPU. Then I will guide you through the IR comprehensive suite for embedded development. Philip will then address the challenges of HMI solutions for embedded systems and also showcasing how Candera solutions can help. Finally, Philip will also present you a very cool smart home washing machine demo using the STM32 U5 with the Neochrome CGI Studio and IR Embedded Workbench. So, uh, with the formalities out of the way, I will pass now to Bertrand. Bertrand, can you share with us the capabilities that make the STM32 U5 a game changer? Thanks, Raphael, for the introduction. Yes, I'm going to provide you some insight about the STM32U5 and how you can benefit from the great product. ST Microelectronics has a large portfolio of microcontroller general purpose. It includes NPU, high performance, mainstream, wireless, and ultra low power. Over 10 billion of STM32 have already been shipped till now. I'm going to focus on the STM32U5, which is a part of the ultra low power family. A lot of applications require energy efficiency with performance. All of this with advanced graphics. The STM32U5 can be the answer from industrial, smart home to wearables. We are going to show a demo illustrating this with an home appliance example. The STM32U5 brings some key innovations. First of all, regarding the power consumption, where we put a lot of effort thanks to the new technology used and by introducing new features like LP band, which enables to have IP working autonomously in low power modes. I integration with a huge amount of flash, 4 MB and SRAM at 2.5 MB, as well as a lot of integrated peripherals. In addition, the STM32U5 has a lot of certified security and safety features. It embeds also the Neochrome, an advanced graphics accelerator. We are going to see how you can benefit from these features to have easily advanced graphics. The STM32U5 offers also 100K cycles for arrays and program for 512 kilobytes of flash. It can be very interesting for data storage. And you don't have to choose between low power and performance with the STM32U5, thanks to the Cortex M33 running at 160 MHz. If you need more, FMAC and Cordic which are mathematic accelerators can be used. The STM32U5 portfolio is large, from 48 pin to 260 pins, and down to 120 kilobytes and up to four megabytes of flash. We are going to use in the demo, the graphics versions. So STM32U599A9. Here is the block diagram of the STM32U5. 
In addition to uh, numerous integrated peripherals, NeoChrome and graphics interface, such as MIPDSI, are embedded. And again, up to 4 MB of flash and 2.5 MB of SRAM. You can develop easily a, a smartphone-like graphic interface on STM32U5, thanks to the advanced hardware and the software tools. We are going to use the discovery kit shown here and that you can already order. The new Chrome is the latest graphics IP adding hardware accelerated 2.5D features. It accelerates the scaling, the rotation, and perspective correct texture mapping. It offloads the CPU and provides smooth and richer graphics effects. Thanks to the high amount of integrated SRAM, you can put the internal buffer inside the stm 32 file and not use external SRAM. It saves bomb cost. In addition, we offer also LQFP packages, so you can use lower cost PCB like four layers. Now, I'd like to hand it over to Raphael, who is going to speak about AR solution. Thank you, Bertrand, for the insightful introduction to the STM32U5 groundbreaking capabilities. Now, let's talk about IR. We proudly stand as the global leader in providing state-of-the-art software solutions for programming microcontrollers and processors in embedded systems. Our solutions are the backbone of innovations across diverse industries, from the high-speed world of automotive development to the precision of medical technology and the ever-involving consumer electronics space. We empower creators and engineers to build the future. With a passionate team of over 210 professionals spread across 13 offices on three continents, our global reach ensures local support and expertise. No matter where you are, IR's commitment to supporting multiple languages and cultures means that we are ready to assist in English, Swedish, German, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, and more. The core of our embedded solutions portfolio is the IR Embedded Workbench. It's a complete development toolchain for embedded software development that provides developers with an integrated development environment, IDE, incorporating a compiler, an assembler, a linker, and a debugger. There is, of course, more. With our powerful integrated solutions and features, you have everything you need in one single view. The IR Embedded Workbench is considered by many to be the industry's best compiler and debugger toolchain, and it's also available in a pre-certified version. Additionally, the IR Embedded Development Solutions suite includes the IR CSTAT and IR CRUN for code quality, IR Visual State for model-based designs based on state machines, and the IR Build Tools for modern embedded DevOps and CI CD practices, everything to accelerate developer productivity. On the embedded security solutions front, we lead with IR Embedded Trust and our late stage security offering IR Embedded Secure IP. This enable a comprehensive 360 degree approach to embedded security, assisting customers from anti-cloning and active IP protection to anti-rollback and authentication all the way through to production with IR Secure Deploy. We fully support the STM32U5 series from ST in our embedded development and embedded security solutions, including a secure boot manager and ARM Threstone support. Now, let's get a bit technical and talk about the solutions themselves. Our IR C++ compiler is well known for its optimization capabilities, offering you the flexibility to fine-tune your code for performance or size, the advanced linker time optimization, including features like dead code removal, works 
with multi-file compilation to potentially squeeze out an extra 5% reduction in code size, an essential gain for resource-constrained environments. Moreover, the compiler's reliability its not just a claim, it's a proven fact backed by comprehensive testing using both in-house and industry standard test suites. And then there is the IRC SPI debugger, a solution that revolutionizes how developers approach problem solving in their code. With its advanced features, it turns debugging from a burden into a powerful insight generating process. Real-time data like stack usage, power consumption, and performance analysis aren't just numbers. They are guidelines to optimizing your application. The various breakpoints from code to data log offer complete control for developers to isolate and resolve issues efficiently. In the world of embedded systems, the quality of your debugging tools can make or break a product. Developers can unleash the full potential of the powerful STM32U5 MCU, make it in a game changer not only in the smart home ecosystem, but for any HMI-based application supported by CGI Studio from Candera. With IR CSPY and the compatible probes like IR iJet and ST-Link, you are equipped to ensure your product success. Lastly, we understand that development doesn't happen in isolation. It's a cycle from the developer's desk to continuous integration and continuous deployment CI/CD systems. That's why IR solutions are designed to integrate smoothly into your existing workflows, making the move from desktop to automated builds seamless. Our VS Code extensions and comprehensive tutorials are your guides for leveraging these workflows, helping your team to innovate at the speed of your company. And with that, I hand over to Philip, who will share how Candera tackles HMI challenges and demonstrate the potential of next generation HMIs in white goods. Philip, the stage is yours. All right, thank you, Raphael. Now I will tell you a little bit about who is Candera, what, what we're doing, and after showing you how implementation of a demo, you will see, you see already here a screenshot. We'll import two scenes from Photoshop and show you how easy it is to bring them to life, to run them on the target in the end. Quickly about uh, Candera, we are an Austrian company. We are a HMI tool provider and development partner for the automotive industry and industrial customers. We support our customers with tool environments as well as with software services in the area of HMI development and embedded software. A little bit of history. Uh, we've been starting with the car industry the last 20 years. So you can see we've been working with eight of the top 10 OEMs, six of the top 10 tier ones, have more than 20 years experience and delivered more than 56 million vehicles. Coming from the automotive world, so we tried to expand in recent years to other areas, other industry, and that's why we are here in this webinar together, because we see a growing demand for HMIs with a high quality in terms of graphics, appearance, and users just nowadays expect a well-designed user interface and also a user experience. And coming from that, I would like to go in a little challenges, a few terms where I think we we could all agree on, and a few technical aspects and challenges of embedded systems, if you will. In general, embedded systems are designed to perform specific functions within a larger system, which might make it difficult to adapt or change hardware, software reusability components, and so on. Software and hardware is typically tightly integrated which gives many opportunities to fine tune the whole product. Then they can be produced cost effectively in large quantities. And also they often have limited user interfaces, such as small screens or a few buttons. So really a lot of limitations are typically appearing on those devices. A few words on that later when I will show the, how powerful 
the STM32U5 is actually. And of course, they typically require specialized development tools and hardware, so a few words on that again later. So all this seems right. There are a lot of challenges when it comes to user interfaces. So we learned they typically require tools. Um, you're interlocked with hardware. Um, adaption, reusability is difficult. So all this sounds like it's very difficult to create a decent uh, user interfaces for an embedded uh, device, right? And one note here, um, if you have any challenges you think you miss or any, any other topics you would like to add here to, again, it's, it's just a brief overview, um, please add it in the chat and let me know and we can discuss it. Even if we can't discuss it, I'm always happy to receive input on that matter. Now a little more on the tool, what we do, what we do different. And here we always thought of, of a HMI development process, not just a software engineering task, but also a designer's task. So in the end, you don't want to do a software engineer, a designing job and the other way around probably. So that's why we came up with a design process um, where you can import from your favorite, favorite graphics tool. So be it Photoshop, Adobe XD, Figma, XRP, and so on and so on. So we take what's already there, and I will show you that later on live, and enrich it with actual logic. So we bring to that pixel, to that elements, the actual logic of a button in that case, of, of a list, of a gauge, whatever it is. And for this, no coding skills are necessary. Um, we try to make it highly intuitive. Um, we bring on sophisticated functions for safety, automated workflows, state machine, graphical effects, and so on and so on. I'd would say ideal for rapid prototyping as you know, you will not just see it like in Figma, you will see it on the actual hardware very early. And all this is also um, hardware agnostic, so can run on any hardware. And now we will go on to the live demo. So start with number one, design, um, your interface uh, with your favorite graphics tool. Um, in this case, you can see all the scenes we've created. I believe they've been created with Adobe XD and Photoshop, so we can show and test both uh, variants. And what I will do now is I will import two scenes here, this second here, this programs one and the wool. Because the wool it's, uh, also includes the animation later on. I will show you how what I mean. And yeah, I think they're the most relevant ones here. So number two, bring your design to life. And here we go in now. You can see there is a Photoshop file, a PSD. I open it. And the smart importer loads all the objects. And the AI will detect elements, and this is already done. So now you can see this, these are all, all the scenes created by the designers. There's that wool one here later on, and there's a background, for example, and standby, they're, they're all in here. And we'll focus for now on this menu here. So you can see there is a button here, and the AI detected. This is a very likely icon button, 97%, which is pretty good. At least it will give a top five, top 10 list. And you can see there is a quite big list. So you can choose from it. And here you can see it detects the normal and the pressed image. This is what the designer put in, in the layers in Photoshop. They are slightly different, not much, but slightly. And that's already it for this scene. I will not import all these buttons and elements. Just rename it to menu. And then we'll add another one. It's the wool one. Again, the background looks nice, and the wool here. For the wool, there are also just a few objects to import. It's one button. You can see I can button the first one in the list. Still pretty good detection rate. So that's already done. So it will work and function as a button. And here, this 30, this is a text value. I will rename it to temperature and also to 30 degrees. So this means this can be changed later on from another resource or from another object. Here you can see the 210 digital clock or text value. It's difficult to tell what it is because 210 could also be a time, but I know it 
it's a text and that's already it for that so we'll click OK and import that so we have now two scenes the menu and the rule just quickly add them from the imported label to the actual program there is some intermediate state you know for for changes or iterations so you can compare it easier and what i do here is to just quickly add a camera so we can see also in the simulation something later i kind of keep forgetting that otherwise and then we test it already so let's fire on the simulation and you can see this is in the play i can choose myself the scenes and then you can see that's the wool that's the menu looks good i only noticed one thing the player button was a little off center so just place it here correctly and then you don't can not only create uh, the graphic part but also the state machine so what will happen if i click here what transition what animation will start and i choose here as an entry point this menu the first scene and as a second uh, the wool if i click on the play button so it's already here you can see if i click i hope it's not too fast you can see on the right it says check click and the sender is the program button so i click ok and then what shall happen is there's a transition request means activate the scene and i'll choose also here the scene we want to show is that wool scene all right that's already it for what is and let's test it again. Let's see if I click programs, here we go, jump to the next scene, perfect. And the next one is now uh, animation. Um, there is here this blur, I will move it a little so you can see it. And this, sh this hides the wool and I want to fade this in nicely so you have some kind of animation, not kind of have animation. So just click on creating a new animation. And then I will switch to the animation design. And then on the right, I can choose all the objects I want to animate. And in this case, I will choose that blur and I will change the alpha value from zero to one. It can be all sorts of animations, transitions, and that's already it. So focus on the wool. And now when I move that slider here, you can see that blurry part, that second layer will fade in nicely. And I can also test it and play it. I think it's one second is a little too short. You barely notice it. So two seconds is, is a much better time. And that's already it for, for creating a scene, uh, animation. Secondly, that animation also has to start so we will go back to the state machine and add another on entry and call the animation here it is then i just got to choose which animation it is if easy we only have one that's it and now we already can test it And you can see nicely two seconds fading in. Looks pretty good. So I hope that gave you a brief overview of what I mean when I say bring your design to life. Really start from, from Photoshop where there is just no logic. It could be also Figma or it could be a XD. So we, we import everything. And third part is of course tested on the actual hardware. So the output is, of course, then transferred uh, to the hardware. Um, if you want to know the details, we not as others to typically compile everything every time again. So the output of the tool is just a, a binary file, which contains all the information, the bitmaps and what we just created, the animation and scene transitions. And the player is like the runtime on the target. This one will open that file we just created in Scene Composer. And this way you can very easily just copy that new file on the device and run it directly. And that also allows us to optimize the hardware and, the and our player 
together and very well. And here I will start it now and you can see the little later version of that wool and what will happen if I click play here you can also see the drum rotating a few moving animations color changing all looks pretty good so thank you that was my part and now back